Hello YouTube. It's time to put this kit together and let's start by rolling out some blue tack worms. I use a flat piece of plastic to roll the blue tack till it's pretty thin. I prefer thin worms as they don't leave a shadow while spray painting. Right, time to refer to the paint scheme and stick the glue tack in place. Avoid any sharp turns. Instead, I would suggest you go for gentle curves. It looks much better and realistic. I now use the third color that came with the set and start spraying. I have masked the areas already painted in green with a masking fluid. Remember, your previous layers of paint must be absolutely dry before you start masking and adding new layers. Else you run the risk of peeling off previous paint layers while removing the mask or smudging the paint. This is what my kit looks like after removing the masking and a layer of clear varnish. I am happy as I have managed to preserve the pre-shading. Plus it's subtle, the way I like it. I now remask the kit, this time to paint the yellow marking bands on the wings. As you can see I have covered the entire wing. The thing is that the angle I will have to spray the yellow paint will naturally push it over the wing. It is very difficult to control the spray at these angles. So it's better to be safe, rather than having to go over the entire paint job again. Okay, it's deckling time. I start with the rear identification band. Remember to remove these tiny numbers as they can later get in the way. Before I dip the decal in water, I punch tiny holes in it with a needle. This is useful for big decals as it allows trapped air to escape as well as the decal to conform to the surface better. I am consciously not using my finger as I tend to tear the decals. Instead, I use a moist brush and encourage the decal to its position. To keep track of how many decals and stencils I have used, I keep striking them off on the instruction sheet. It's time now to place the last decal. Keep in mind that decals often overlap each other as they do here. In such cases, make sure you plan the order of decaling in advance. Remove all air and water trapped under the decal. This is very important, otherwise the decals will not conform to the surface properly. Once in place, I flush the decal with microsol. I will do this several times till the decal conforms. Right, the plane now looks nice and new but I want to go for a more weathered look, so I will add some chipping. I am using this Revel aluminium paint and a very fine brush. I thin the paint down with some water and start.
here are some guidelines I follow for what I think is a more realistic look. I paint along the edges of the panel lines so that it appears as if the paint has started chipping from the sides of the panels. The areas near the cockpit are chipped more than the outer wing. Here I am chipping the canopy area. Since the canopy slid open and shut, one can presume that some amount of chipping took place here. It's now time to give this kit an oil wash. I start with some white spirit. The container is already black because I use the same one for making oil washes. I next add some black and brown oil paints. and onto the kit. Please remember to seal all your previous work with varnish before applying a wash of any kind. In my case, I applied 3 layers of gloss varnish and let it dry overnight. I left the oil wash to dry for about 6 hours. Oil paints take a long time to dry, so if you don't give them enough time to stick to the surface, they will come right off. Also, this is the time when you can easily leave a huge fingerprint on the kit, hence the gloves. I just use a paper towel to wipe the wash away, moving in the direction of the airflow. In some areas, I deliberately leave some wash to give the appearance of collected grease and grime. This is what my kit looks like after the oil wash. The panel lines are now showing and the paint job is slightly subdued. Don't forget the tiny bits and bobs. I base paint them and then paint them in the correct colors, just like I did the kit. I will also give them an oil wash so that the paint matches with the main kit. No shortcuts. Okay, let me show you this stencil I got. It's got circles of varying diameters and it's a super tool to paint wheels. If you don't have one, you will have to hand paint the wheels. Talking of hand painting, this rear wheel is too small for even the stencil. So I take my finest brush and paint it by hand. Go slowly and carefully.
it's time to add some final touches like the smoke stains. I use these soft pastels which I ordered online and a brush that I have trimmed down. Rest is pretty simple. Just identify areas where some stains are likely to be like the exhaust here and brush the pastels off. The last pieces, the propeller and the spinner, are now glued in. Lastly, some matte varnish to seal everything in. Right then. I hope you enjoyed this video series and I hope you found something useful in it. Let me just say that there are several more techniques out there, but it was not possible to cover them all here. What I have attempted to do is offer you a starting point, a place from where you can launch off. The idea is to use information here as a springboard and then find your own style and technique. Well enough said. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.